always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Hey guys, how is everyone doing? Thank you for tuning into the GSMC Entertainment Podcast brought to you by the by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Seal, and today we're going to talk about different segments. It's going to be a lot about really Netflix and Hulu. Uh, we're going to talk about Shit's Creek, which is on Netflix. This is Us, which is on Hulu. We're also going to talk about Lucifer one of my favorite shows out there, 100% recommend, go watch, um, that's on Netflix as well, and then we're going to talk about the star of Real Housewives, Jen Shaw, being arrested, and that's literally what's viral right now, that's what everyone's talking about right now, so stay tuned, I hope everyone is doing well, staying safe, you know, enjoying the sun, you know, just having fun, anyways, so, with that being said, the weather has been perfect here in Cincinnati. I went to this place called Trader's World Market with my sisters. And basically, this place is like a huge, I would say, I would call it an American bazaar, honestly. It's like a huge shopping safari type of thing. Basically, this place brought me back to my nine-year-old self when I was a kid and I would go with my parents, and I would just pick out a Barbie doll, and it'd usually be used, but, you know, as a kid, that's all you need is something to be happy with. Um, Honestly, it's just really funny how kids are very content with anything that you give them, and how small places or a place or, you know, if you remember a smell, it could really bring you back years um to your childhood and this place is kind of like that we were just out there driving and we saw it and we were like you know what let's just go and if you're unaware of what this place is it's literally like so big you could get lost in it it has like 16 buildings inside of it and there's over 800 vendors um and that's only inside of the buildings and then there, and then there is like 400 vendors spaces like outside so there's outdoor and indoor vendors and you know anyone can go uh rent or you know you could all anyone really can go out there and just uh book one vend one one vendor (laughs) book a space for your own business or you know even if you don't have a business if you just want to sell anything that you have just go and you know have your own space and rent it out for the day Um, But anyways, there's literally like a lot of parking as well, which is like so easy to find parking and makes it flexible for anyone to come anytime they want. Um, There is literally anything that you can buy there, whether it was antiques, collectibles, even used merchandise, fruits and vegetables. There's ice cream. There's all type of foods as well to buy. There is a bridal shop, a barber shop, and there is even like skincare, like people that uh, sell like skincare products, which I actually did buy Shea Butter that's homemade. And honestly, like I'd rather do that. I'd rather buy homemade Shea Butter and support support small businesses than buy something that's full of fragrance and, you know, and which is also fun, you know, to be able to support small businesses or Sometimes, like, you could also find gems that you can't find anywhere else. People would be selling, um, what's it called? Like, what was it? It was, like, it was um, something with the signatures on it, with, like, huge celebrity signatures on it, whether it was a guitar or, like, a, a record player. And people actually buy this stuff. I actually even saw people that sell DVDs, like, old DVDs for, like, $1. So it's, like... All I'm saying is, go ahead, if you have like a trader's world near you, go ahead, take your kids or even just go alone. It's fun to see the different vendors and what they offer and what things you could find there, you know, because 
you would you never know what you could find and that's what's interesting about places like that is the fact that you go there you could either remember uh, an old memory of yours or you could make new memories or find something that you've always wanted there you go for a cheaper price as well so that's something that's always fun so for today's segment we are going to talk about something that's resurfacing the internet right now people that have been talking about it and honestly that's how I found out about it I was on Twitter it's always Twitter somehow it's always Twitter I was on Twitter and someone was talking about a reality TV show and some scandalous news going on and I was like whoa what is going on so I clicked on the hashtag and it's about Jen Shaw she is um, a TV star on the reality TV show, The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Um, this show is very much liked and it's about a hidden social circle that's about successful women who have created their own paradise filled with luxury homes, shopping sprees, and their multi million dollar businesses and brands. So basically, it's about wealthy women being successful and their journey on that and what they own and what they don't own I kind of like understand it's kind of I feel like it's full of drama I have not watched it but it seems like it would be like at the end of the day it is a tv it's a tv show but we're gonna talk about one of the stars who like I said Jen Shaw and she was arrested with federal fraud charges in connection to a nationwide telemarketing scam now, honestly, that is big news. The reality TV star of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City was arrested and charged in connection with a telemarketing scheme that defrauded hundreds and hundreds of people, many of whom are elderly over the age of 55. And on Tuesday, even her assistant, Stuart Smith, was also Arrested and charged because he was her partner in crime. Okay, guys, and watch this. As part of their scheme uh, that lasted from 2012 until like literally this year of this month, um, what they did is they sold victims fake services, including tax preparations and website designs. And they took advantage of the fact that elderly, a lot of the elders out there can't use the computer and many of their victims were, like I said, 55 and up. Um, and that's what the, one of the, many of the complaints uh, said about them is that they used um, the vulner- vulnerability of the elderly and, you know, took advantage of that. So both Shaw and her assistant are each facing one count of, of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering and according to a press release from the u.s attorney office these charges carry maximum sentences of 30 to 20 years in prison so was it worth it no i honestly do not understand you are a reality tv star why would you put yourself in a position where you could be called out publicly on something like this i honestly do not understand it if you're a TV star, you probably have a, a lot of money. I mean, enough that you could be not paying, uh, not living check to check. So going out there and taking the extra step to take advantage of people to make yourself to make yourself wealthier is just ridiculous. On top of all of this, how embarrassing must it be to get arrested while you're filming your TV show? She was literally filming um, The Housewives of Salt Lake City. The day she got arrested, that's what sources said. Mm, quite like, un, like it's not worth it. Why put yourself in that situation? Also, I do want to mention that her assistant Stuart Smith was also um, arrested with her. So it wasn't just her alone. Uh, they have been charged and now we're just waiting for the next. What's very ironic is that she portrays herself as a wealthy and a successful business person on the reality TV show. So her and her assistant, her first assistant allegedly generated and sold lead lists of innocent individuals for other members of their scheme to continue to scam them over 
and over again. Many prosecutors claimed that Shaw and Smith's scheme was a coordinated effort to traffic in lists of potential victims referred to as the leads, which are which are the elders or the elderly. From there, they allegedly sold those leads to telemarketing companies that would attempt to sell business services to the targeted individuals. So basically, just to attacking the vulnerables and taking advantage of them to build their own business or to build their own bank account. How selfish. A special agent even said that Shaw and Smith flaunted their lavish lifestyle to the public as a symbol of their success. In reality, they allegedly built their opulent lifestyle at the expense of vulnerables, vulnerable, often elderly working class people. As alleged disturbingly, Shaw and Smith objectified their very real human victims as their leads to be bought and sold, offering their personal information for sale to other members of their fraud ring. And they also said, as a result, their new reality may very well turn out differently than they expected. And obviously, they've been charged, so it will be differently than they ex- than they expected. Okay, also, can we talk about the fact that she, Jen Shaw, can't access her own virtual arraignment because uh, of the fans? They're literally flooding the line. Um, so when people dialed into the virtual arraignment, arraignment uh, of the Real Housewives, Salt Lake City cast member Jen Shaw on Wednesday, and she could not access the line. After about 45 minutes of trying to get um, Shaw on the call, U.S. District Judge Sidney Stain finally gave up and adjourned the proceeding to Friday. Honestly, fans are crazy. They really have this huge, uh, what's it called? power to change things, well not change things, but they have, they really can make an impact or an effect on what's going on or what's happening because of how they react to things. I mean, look at this. I mean, they really dialed into the virtual court uh, conference and the system couldn't even accommodate more participants because over 200 people were on there. Also guys, as I was scrolling through Twitter to see what people have been saying about all this, and yes, Twitter is my favorite social media platform. I kind of like made that clear. But anyways, um, someone posted like an audio recording. It was like a leaked audio recording. And they said it was like a Jen conducting one of her illegal acts. And honestly, I don't know if no one made, no one made, um, no one confirmed that this was her indeed. But a lot of people are saying that it is her. Um, A lot of people are actually confused as to why she would directly be doing it um, when a lot of the news said that, and a lot of the press said that she had a huge, uh, what's it called, a huge recruiting team with her that would do everything for her or they would be on her side doing it for her, her assistant, for example. But this one, you know, they said that she did it directly and scammed people. So there is a lot to it, obviously, but at least she was caught doing it and there's a lot that she has to handle and take accountable for you know you have to be you have to take accountable for your actions and the fact that you took advantage of vulnerable people and proceeded with it continuously for years it's kind of like sad but at the same time very selfish I kind of said it before I know but that is the only word I can find very selfish so the last that I've been reading about this is that she is out on bond from federal custody, you know, following her arrest for wire fraud. But she has to follow a lot of strict rules and there's a lot of strings attached to it. So according to TMZ, there's a law that she is banned from and that she has to follow for her to stay on point, you know. She is banned from traveling outside of the outside of Utah without permission. She had to forfeit her passport, so she is not allowed to leave the US at all. And she can't use her credit cards without prior permission either. Adding to that, she is prohibited from transferring any assets without more uh, that worth that are worth more than 10k. And of course, she cannot, I mean, she cannot engage in any telemarketing activities 
while out on bond. I honestly think she just got it easier for her. You know, this is not very hard to follow. I'm glad they even attached all those um all those rules for her to follow, you know. It's at the end of the day, it's really sad that people um were victims of this whole fraud case um and the fact that she used she took advantage of others to build herself an empire that's that should that's non existent, to be honest. Like why do this to others? But that's really all about her right now. Maybe there's more that's gonna come out. We'll see. It's all it's always up to like time to, for us to see what will happen in the future. But the fact that this is big news, I can see why. Um stay tuned because in our next segment we are gonna talk about Shits Creek, This Is Us, and Tom Ellis finishing filming on Lucifer. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on twitter visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info Hello guys and welcome back. So who is excited about this segment? Today we're going to talk about Lucifer, but before we talk about Lucifer, let's recap what we talked about in the first segment. And obviously the first segment we talked about a lot about um, Jennifer Shaw and what she's been arrested for. So there's a lot of opinions on what happened and why it happened. There's people that are defending her. There's people that are not defending her, not on her side at all. I don't know how you can defend someone like that. But just a recap. She is the star of the reality TV show Real Housewives Housewives of Salt Lake City. She was arrested and charged in a massive telemarketing scheme. She was also charged and arrested with her assistant Stuart Smith and she was also given some really strict alignments that she has to follow such as like strict credit card limit, travel limits, you know, after her wire fraud arrest. She can't leave the U.S. She is banned from traveling outside of Utah and that's and also she her she has to turn she had to turn in her passport. So I mean that was really a little summary of what we talked about in the last segment. Now we get to talk about Lucifer. Honestly this show is so iconic. I recommend it 100%. I know I feel like I say that about every single show that I talk about on here. Let's be realistic because most of them are one of my favorite shows. But this show actually has my heart. Not because of the actors that are on the show. I personally, when I started watching the show, I didn't even know who the actors were. It wasn't even that popular when it started. Um, And I remember starting... I'm not even into like um, supernatural shows. I mean, my sister did make me watch 12 seasons of Supernatural that has Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles. And I stopped watching it because damn, like 12 seasons, that's a lot. 
But I think the show has like 17 seasons as a total. So I was like not into watching any more shows that are longer than like six seasons max. So when I started watching the show, I think at the beginning it had like two seasons or one. No, it had I think one season and it was canceled on its original um, channel that it was broadcasted on. And then Netflix picked it up and now it's going on to its sixth season, I believe. Yes, because that, because I finished watch day, watching season 5A because now there's a season 5B. That's coming soon too. And we will talk about that as well. But I just want to talk about my experience with the show. So when I started watching the show, I was kind of intrigued because of the storyline itself. It talks about, you know, Satan, supernatural, celestial beings and whatnot. And I was kind of like, okay, well, this is different. Let's watch it. The actor is, he has a beautiful dialect. You know, his, everything about him like was just perfect. I, I love the way he played the character and, the plot was different. And then the whole part about it ending, like literally season, season one, that's when I finished it. And I was like, okay, well, that's not nice. I mean, we didn't get a closure to this to the characters. And then Netflix picked up the show and it became such a big hit. Everyone started watching it. And I honestly personally think the show started off really slow and there was a lot of repetition in the storyline until Netflix picked it up and the show became shorter. It was like... I believe season one was over 10 episodes and then season two, three, four and whatnot after Netflix uh, took care of the show, it became less. There was like 10 episodes per season or six episodes per season. And then that's when like character, there was a lot of character developments and then the storyline became much more interesting for each character. Honestly, there was more characters coming in. So I think like when there's less episodes, there's more, there's more potential to the writers and then there's really a lot that people can do that writers can work with and producers can you know achieve but the show was the show is a big hit for social media viewers Netflix too and you know the actors themselves gained so much popularity through it so that's that's a plus you know I think I feel like with Netflix it's always a miss or hit some shows, can, like, they would be successful the second day. They would be trending the second day. And then when when something is literally, when something goes viral once, everyone will be watching it, whether they like it or not. They will just be intrigued and they go and click on the episode. I think that's how a lot of things become successful is by clicks. And, I mean, I feel like Lucifer deserves it anyways. So, anyways, let's get into it. So the show talks about Lucifer Morningstar. He was bored. He was really bored from his life in hell. And he decides that he wants to come and live in LA. I know. He was he was just fed up with being a servant in hell. And, you know, he just was like, you know what? I'm going to go spend some time on earth to be to better understand humanity and why humans go to hell. He helps humanity with his, you know, power or with their miseries through his experience and telephatic abilities, abil- abilities to bring people, I don't know why I stuttered, sorry, to bring people's deepest desires and thoughts out of them. So if you watch the show, or if you're going to watch the show, he has something that he always say, which is, what do you truly desire? He says it to everyone. It's like their weakness. And he meets, you know, his lover, but I'm not going to go deep into that because spoilers, but he meets a detective in his nightclub while she was solving a murder. And that's how she becomes, and then he tries to help her and he becomes an LAPD um, consultant and he tries to punish people for their crimes through law and justice. It's a really good show. You know, there's a lot to it. And I think people underestimate the show because, I mean, I feel like if you don't like supernatural, you know, dramas, you might not like this one. But I I think you should give it a try because the show will keep you on edge and it will literally keep you up all night. 
And, you know, it, I'm just glad that there's more seasons to it. And I'm glad that it's a, a gem to find. There is uncanny humor with, like, a touch of eternal theme. to exactly, like, the whole, like, what I desire. It's, like, the whole theme of the show. And there is some Bible stories in the show. And there's plot lines that weigh around it. But at the same time... I personally don't think that's their main focus. I think there is more depth into the characters, even Lucifer himself, that I find different in the episodes. And I find it, you know, I find it different in shows in general. And that's what Lucifer has that's different and uniqueness to it. The actor that plays Lucifer is Tom Ellis. And he posted two days ago an Instagram post about the show itself but he posted a picture of him holding what it seems like a lighter and it has two dates on it March 17th 2015 which I assume it is the day they started filming the show and then March 29th 2021 which is most likely the last day they were on set and he captioned it and he said Today is the day. Six years ago, I started a journey with the most amazing group of people. And today we say a fond farewell to each other. Thank you to every single crew member who has helped who has helped bring the story of Lucifer to life. What a, a ride. And then P.S. Thanks for the beautiful gift. At, at the, and then he tagged his wife, which is very sweet of him. And unfortunately, the show is coming to an end. But I personally think it's good. I mean, I personally don't think a show needs more than seven seasons unless like there is like new characters always coming and there's no more developments. But I personally think writers lose the plot line really fast nowadays and there's a lot of repetition that happens, which leads to boredom in the scenes, you know, when there's not much, much excitement. And I don't want the show to lose that special you know, part about it is the fact that you're always intrigued to find out what's going to happen next and why this is happening. And then you're always shocked as to why this happened, you know, because you never assume, you know, in every single thing you watch, you assume that this happened because of that, or you're, you have a vision of what's going to happen next in the scene. With the Lucifer, you kind of don't, and you kind of don't understand why this happened until like literally the end of the season, Unless they leave you on a cliffhanger, which they do a lot. And I am sad that the show is ending, obviously because I love it. But I'm happy. And I, I'm, I'm just hoping that they would leave it on a good note. And they're not going to leave it as an open ending with our imagination. No, I do not like that. Because the last scene I remember was literally jaw-dropping. That I was like, what? I don't even know how they're going to even continue it after that last season. I'm not going to say what it was, but all I'm saying is I just hope that season six and season five B, when they drop, they are, they go trending again because that's what they deserve. And then we actually get a closure and a good ending because I think the fans deserve it. And I think the characters deserve a good ending, but that's all I'm saying. Also, not to mention that the actors on the show have great chemistry together, especially Lucifer and Chloe. And that's really rare to find, you know, it does it, when they're acting, it's, their acting is, what was that word? Very natural. It's very natural. You can tell that they're very comfortable with each other and that they're actually enjoying the scenes they're doing and the story itself and you can even see that behind the scenes and it doesn't have to be just the main leading characters even the extras on the show and even Maze who is a demon on the show I actually she's my favorite woman she is a rock star I love her I love her character I think she's very special I think her character is written very well with so much critique into her character and I think in any character that an actor plays the char- the actor himself or her whoever plays the character you know obviously the actors they're the ones that bring the life to the plot line you know i think anyone can read a script but not anyone can act upon the script and not anyone can bring 
the character to life and not everyone can make the character likable or or even unlikable. And I think with Maze, with each season, you kind of get that, you know, and there is a season where you kind of don't understand why she did a certain thing. And then in another scene, you're like, oh, I sympathize with her. And I think that's, I believe that's actually very hard to do as an actor is in one scene, make everyone hate you. But then in the next scene, you make everyone love you or sympathize with what you did, even if you were like the devil himself, even Lucifer himself, you know, he's the devil. But there are scenes where you're like, you actually feel some type of sorrow towards the character, you know, even if he was in the wrong. And not every actor can execute that. So I think that's very special. And I think that's very different. And I love that. And I think every character on the show can captivate that type of acting. And some exciting news. Tom Ellis actually did post another Instagram post two days ago too. And he said, Prayers Answered Lucifer Season 5B drops on Netflix May 28th. Can't wait for you all to meet Dad. That's a hint, guys, for what's, what happened on the last uh, scene for season 5A. Anyways, I am so hyped for this new season. I'm so excited. I'm so excited because I'm going to be binge watching it. I'm going to bring my iced coffee and I'm just going to be binge watching it all night. I cannot wait. This is so exciting. And I recommend you guys go watch it as well. Worth it. Just give it a try, even if you're not into supernatural dramas. And for that being said, I'll have to end this segment right now, but stay tuned because we will be talking about This Is Us and Shit's Creek. Can't wait. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hello guys and welcome back. So we're going to talk about, for this segment, we're actually going to talk about the show This Is Us. You might be aware of it, you might be not, but stay tuned because this segment I will tell you all about it. But before we talk about This Is Us, I'm going to talk about what we talked about in our previous segments in case um, you missed out on it. Hopefully you didn't, but in case you did, I got you. So The first segment, we spoke about Jen Shaw. So she is the star of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And what happened is she was arrested on Tuesday for alleged money laundering and defrauding hundreds and hundreds of elderly people in a telemarketing scam. And unfortunately, her fans were also uh, faked out by this. And she was charged. She was held accountable for her actions. And I'm glad she is because she's been doing this for years and years. And then we also spoke about one of my favorite shows on Netflix. And I could not wait that I'm talking about it because Tom Ellis just posted. Well, he posted like a few days ago. He posted 
an Instagram post about him finishing the show Lucifer season six. And then he did mention that season five B will be dropping in May. And that's so exciting. I cannot wait for the show uh, for the next part of five of season five to come out because I'm actually like was left on a on a shocking ending of the last season. So it was like, okay, let's see what's going to happen. Um, and I actually really like the fact that with Netflix shows, you really don't, I mean, with really, with the good ones, with the good ones, you really don't have um, any type of understanding of what's going to happen next. No one can spoil it. No one can really do anything. And I mean, that's part of, of the agreement for the actors. I get it. But at the same time, with this show in particular, you really can't guess what's going to happen next. So that's why I'm kind of like intrigued and hyped for it. And then, and now we're just going to talk about, again, a show that I actually really, really like. And that's really close to my heart. But at the same time, it's not the easiest to watch either. And you'll understand why in a second. But we're going to talk about This Is Us. It's on Hulu, by the way. This is not on Netflix because I feel like I talk about every show that's on Netflix. But this one, this one is on Hulu. So you can watch it on Hulu. I just want to explain something that the show talks about the past, the present, and also the future. That's the the whole scope of the story. It expands into, you know, the past, the present, and the future. And it tells you a story of the Pearson family. I honestly, when I first started off watching the show, I did not understand that perspective until you like you finish the first like episode you kind of understand why this is an adult and why they're talking about it i can't i can't really explain it you have to watch the show to understand it but it's that's basically the whole gist of the show and i think i think that's what makes it different it definitely makes it different but here's the thing if you're if you really are ready to watch the show i'm just saying that prepare your tears because there's so much crying you're going to be crying like every scene basically yeah but that sums up the show crying i'm just kidding but it really gets you emotional and it really gets you it's it's like full of milestones that the characters go through and there's so many there's different like sorts of timelines that they jump through and that's that's also why the show i think has a lot of there's a lot of like events that get covered in one episode that go through different timelines if that makes sense like the the characters themselves they see themselves in the future you'll see a scene of them in the future but then it goes back to them in the present and then you'll see them in the past it's crazy but that's how the story is complete is by us seeing the before and after in the future but also it is a heartwarming and emotional story about a unique set of triplets and their struggles and you know also about their wonderful parents that have a beautiful love story and I literally my heart was like what do they say like when your when your eyes are turned to hearts you know that that little meme god that's me when I watch the couples on the show my my eyes literally like I get so many butterflies just watching the couple on the show they have so much great chemistry together I love them so talks about Rebecca Pearson who once has like a very very difficult pregnancy with triplets and then on the day that she gives birth that was the same day um, as that was the same day of Jack's birthday which is her husband he was turning 36 she has Kevin Kate and Randall and at the time, one of the triplets does die, which wa- which is why I'm getting next as to why this story is different and actually very special and why it's very heartwarming. It takes place during the early stage of their marriage, you know, surrounding the birth of the three children. And then, at dif- and then it'll show you the different phases of the children's upbringing, which was not very smooth for the full, the full family. And then we will see separate stories concerning Kevin, Kate, and Randall. And then we will see their adult, the, the presented adult years for them as well. Uh, we'll see Kevin, who was generally the neglected one because he had like a, he had outwarded issues. 
And then we will see Kate, who has always had on extra weight, and then she, her, her issues with that. And then we'll see Randall, the gifted one, the smart one, um, the visible outsider, and then being the non-K child. By that, I mean Randall was is not their biological child. They adopted Randall. And then we'll see the emotional ties between the full family and then we'll also, and also because they all share the same birthday, it has the same conception. And then we'll see on each birthday, there's a different uh, event that happens that has a deeper meaning um, to their, to each of the characters. And then we kind of discover that within their lives. You know, um, also I do want to, I do want to talk about more about Randall because, so the full family is like, Caucasian and then Randall is African American so he we kind of see the difficulties he goes through within that um, and him finding himself when he grows up and I actually really like that story and we also talk and then I really like the fact that Kate how she finds self-acceptance with battling obesity and how she tries to find love with within herself um before she finds love outside, you know? And then Kevin pursuing a mean, meaningful career and the difficulty choices that he has to make. So to be honest, the show, if you're looking for something that's very relatable, I think the show really depicts that. It really does bring that out there. You know, if you're watching the show, you kind of, see, if you're struggling, struggling in a way, um, you kind of see that. Even if it's like a small, you know, I don't, I even it even talks about grieving as well. So there is a lot to the show, a lot of emotions that go through the show, and I believe that if you're looking for something that's not relatable, that's not the show for you because honestly you will cry even if you don't relate, but somehow there is going to be storylines that will hit very close to home. Um I I don't know if that's was their goal, but I think it was because I mean they're just talking about a regular family that goes through different events day by day and and they're not very dramatic events something that could happen to any of us and small struggles that we might see others going through but to them they're big battles and I I personally couldn't finish the show I mean it was truly too heavy for me but I can see why people love the show and I actually really like the show I mean I think it has good points it has uh a great message that I believe the writers are trying to send to the viewers. And it's really hard nowadays to find shows with, you know, great, great concepts to them. And I think that's the, I I think that's what they're trying to portray in the show is, you know, that everyone goes through different battles and every battle is a big battle just because someone else is going through it. Doesn't mean your battle. I mean, just because someone is, you're not going through someone else's battle doesn't mean, um, that they're not being hurt or they're not struggling you know everyone struggles differently so I think I think that's what makes the show different and very emotional I think what's really special about the show is the fact that each episode drives you in with different questions about the characters and what happened to them and you kind of get the answers in flashbacks in different episodes and scenes you know, um, and I also do want to mention that this is type of a piece of art for me. Um, when you have a collection of stories and you're able to write it in a way where it's um, where it's neat and it's not confusing to the audience. You know, and the Pearsons told the audience through little things going back and forth, and. And if you're you're if you're not if you're unsure if you want to watch the show or not, I think you should just give it a try. I actually watched a couple of seasons, and yeah, it was a bit heavy, but at the same time, I think it has a great message. Like I said before, and I believe that you might you might understand why why it's a why a lot of people like it. And also, not to mention the actors do a great job at portraying the scenes or their characters to the T, honestly, 
the best. And why I'm talking about the show is because the lead actress had to leave the show for quite a while because she was pregnant and she gave birth. And everyone is just talking about right now that her character will be back on the show and Mandy Moore is back. So she plays the lead actress on the show. Rebecca. I love her. Do you guys have you guys watched um what was that movie A Walk to Remember, I believe? It's a really really old movie, but I remember as a child that's all I watched. It was well not all I watched, but I remember as a child, it was one of the movies that I was allowed to watch, okay? And Mandy Moore was the main actress and okay, well I'm just saying the, the movie's heartbreaking. I feel like everyone have watched that show. Um, where she, spoiler alert, she has cancer and she hides it from, you know, her man. He doesn't know that she has cancer and we find out at the end of the movie and we just like, it just breaks your heart fully. I just remember her by that movie. I have not watched anything else, but then I watched um, This Is Us, This Is Us, and I was like, okay, well, I trust her acting. She is amazing. Yeah, so if you have not watched the show, I suggest you go watch it. Give it a try. Just prepare a tissue box next to you. Also, the father, Jack, on the show. Oh my god. He is just incredible, incredible, okay? I also really, really like... He's a phen- phenomenal actor, too. Uh, Milo. I couldn't imagine a better actor that played th- that could play the role, honestly. And Milo and Mandy Moore are like a real-life partners. They're perfect together, and I think that's one of the reasons why the show is successful, to be quite honest with you. And I really like the fact that they ba- go back to um, past and future to find answers. Um, it gives you something to dive into that reminds you of like a home life and, you know, real love, you know, especially that you don't, you kind of don't really find that everywhere in shows. It melts your heart. It makes you feel happy sometimes too. There's, it's not always just about you know a tissue box next to you you know sometimes you could be crying with from happiness and I think the show has all these mixes into it so that's why I highly recommend it and I highly recommend you watch it because of the actors as well they have touching roles and it will it will leave it will leave something behind you know it will leave something behind that you can preserve in different situations in your own life and that was all but guys stay tuned because our last segment we are going to talk about Shit's Creek and yes I'm going to say it again one of my favorite shows on Netflix if not my favorite show on Netflix so it's I know the show is over but it is one of my favorites and I feel like I say that about every show but truly it is one of my favorites um so yeah stay tuned Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello guys, how is everyone doing? Well, we are almost done with our podcast for today's episode, but before we dig into the last segment, let's talk about what we talked about in the previous segments. So we spoke about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City star, Shen Shaw, and how she was arrested for alleged money laundering and defrauding hundreds of elderly people in a telemarketing scam. And then we also spoke that about the fact that her assistant was involved as well, and he was also arrested. And according to new legal documents obtained by TMZ, Jen Shaw is banned from traveling outside of Utah without permission. She also had to forfeit her passport, so obviously she is not 
allowed to leave the U.S. And she can't use her credit cards without prior permission either. Adding to that, she is prohibited from transferring any assets worth more than 10K. And she cannot engage in any telemarketing activities while out on bond. That's all for Jen Cha. But now we also did talk about Lucifer. Again, one of the best shows on Netflix. My favorite. The show has many new upcomings, such as new seasons, a new season for five, which is like 5A, 5B. There's a t- two parts to season five. So we talked about the fact that it's going to be dropping late May. There's going to be a 5B. And then, well, that's very exciting anyways. And then we did talk about the actors informing everyone that they finished filming season six which is like the full show which is a bittersweet moment but at the same time I think it's time you know I think no show should be dragged for um you know only for clicks and then we we also did talk about what's it called we did talk about this is us one of one of the shows on on uh, Hulu, it's not on Netflix, on Hulu. Kind of had to remind myself. I feel like everything I talk about is on Netflix, but this one is on Hulu. So with This Is Us, we talked about the storyline, what the story gravitates, what's special about the story, and what it portrays, and you know the, the fact that it goes back in the future, past, and the present, which makes it different and captivates the viewers uh, way dif- way differently, or let's say. It really makes you want to keep watching to understand what's going on because it's all in a chronological order. And then we also talked about how Mandy Moore is going to be back on the show. And as you guys know, or if you don't know who Mandy Moore is, she is the main lead actress on the show. So she's she's important to the show. I mean, you can't have a show without her. And it's actually what's really special about the show is even if your character dies on the show, there's always going to be the past that we get to watch. So let's say a character dies. Yes, in the future they don't exist, but in the past they exist and we get to see that a lot. It's not just like small flashbacks. No, it's like actual big scenes. So I think that's what makes people comfortable with watching the show is the fact that even if their favorite character dies and if they're big characters, they'll still be able to see them in a lot of scenes. Now I'm going to talk about Schitt's Creek. And if you're unaware of what the show is, go right now. No, right now. If you're driving, do not go right now. But once you get home or when you have time, go on Netflix and please just watch the first five minutes of it on Netflix. Please, you're not going to regret this. It's seriously one of... it. It's a serotonin boost. If you're having a bad day, if you really need something to lift your spirit up, or I don't know, if you just feel like you need something, you need a laugh, just go right now, Netflix, search up Shit's Creek, and just watch the first five minutes. Because the first five minutes will literally make you watch the whole show. That's what happened to me. I literally just like randomly clicked on the show. I had no, I was unaware of what the plot was or what what it was. I didn't even know if it was comedy. I just clicked on it because I was bored one night and I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. I didn't even know who the actors were. Were I'm the type of person who watches the show for the plot. Um, I'm not. Yes, I watch sometimes for the actors. Yes, I mean who doesn't? But I didn't know who the actors were and I was like, okay, let me just watch it. It looks. It looks good. I mean, I'm bored. Let me just click on something. And that's what happened with Shit's Creek. I was just on Netflix and I was like, okay, this seems like it's good. I mean, it's on the list for um, 10 most popular shows on Netflix. And I clicked on it and I, till this day, I would rewatch it right now. Even if I know the scene 100%. Even if, even if I know what the script is. Even if I can mumble after the characters' scenes. I will literally go back and rewatch the show. It's like... It's like Friends. You guys know Friends? Obviously, who doesn't know Friends? It's like Friends where it's always playing and you don't get bored of it. You kind of know the scenes heart by heart. You know it all. I feel like that's with Schitt's Creek. 
And if you just give it a chance and watch like five minutes, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's funny, but yet there's there's moments where you just sit down and you just realize like what like what happened in the scene. You're the characters just play play this. The actors play the characters so well. It's like they're they're act they're they are an actual family. You would not believe that they're acting. I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I kind of say that about all actors, but not every actor can play their character very, very incredibly well. Where to the fact that you just can't see them outside of that character. You know what I mean? And that's how I kind of see Shit's Creek as. So this show is a Canadian TV sitcom. It is created by. Father and son, Eugene and Dan Levy. It was aired originally on CPC TV from January 13, 2015 till April 7, 2020. It's around 80 episodes and six seasons. So the show starts off about a wealthy couple who wake up one day and they have to literally leave their house, leave their belongings, leave everything behind and all their assets basically because they completely found themselves broke and we're talking about people that were wealthy, wealthy, okay? And then they only had one remaining assets which is a small town called Schitt's Creek and I just want to do, I want to say something um, in relating to why um, they became broke. It's because they got defrauded by their business manager so Moira is the wife and then Johnny is the husband and then they have Alexis which is their daughter and then David. So after they lose everything they move to the small town Schitt's Creek. Um and then they this once uh wealthy couple they have to give up their life, you know, their lavish the lavish, um, expensive life behind, and then take their two spoiled children, and they have to leave their pampered lives behind as well, and they go to this really small town where it's full of poverty, and they have to come together as a family to survive, you know, because they just suddenly were broke, and we kind of see that in a very comedy way in a very humorous way they would joke about the the town but the joke is really on them because now they live in that town and then we kind of see that day to day how they adapt to being you know regular human beings that don't have much to give real real, you know they don't have much to work with they just kind of have to get jobs and work their way up and we kind of see that you know um especially with their kids like Alexis and David who were given everything you know they were they had a silver spoon in their mouth since they were born but then after they their parents you know were broke we kind of see how they started looking for themselves more uh started like doing daily tasks that we do that they've never done before whether it was even pouring themselves coffee you know, simple as that. And it's kind of like funny because we kind of see the actors, you know, or the characters showcase that in a funny way. While at the same time, you get heartwarming scenes where when they find themselves or they see themselves, you know, it's a lot of like joyride of emotions altogether. You know, you feel good about watching the, sh- the show because there's a journey to it and there's a storyline. And at the same time, there is like laughter, emotions, and there's also learning, you know, um, because not only because not only because there's the learning aspect of it comes from the fact that there's a lot of character development, you know, characters that were very spoiled or had it only one way now kind of have to struggle to find themselves and to find themselves in a different mannerism. Than, than what they're used to um, go through. Um, I also want to talk about the fact that they did win um, Emmy Awards. Eugene Levy 
won an outstanding lead actor in a, for a comedy series, which is very well deserved. Also, not to mention again, uh, well, I'm mentioning it again, but each character grows and does change in such incredible, very subtle ways and in ways that it doesn't just develop fast. You know, every season you see it grow slowly on them. It's like a perfect pace, like throughout the seasons. Um, and you get to witness that and you got, you kind of like start to tear up, you know, cause it's so genuine and how like genuine, how incredible the writing is and how great the actors showcase that. And, you know, they all have chemistry together. And I think, I think what makes a show successful is chemistry behind the scenes and on scene, on, on screen with actors because I feel like that what creates a show special and what creates it. Also, it is like a full package, you know, type of show. Because not one season felt like the quality went down or the writing where the writers were bored and they just wanted to fill scenes in. It's literally one of the best series that I have watched till now. You know, there are like, I'm not gonna lie, like there's a lot of shows that I love watching. That there are scenes where you're like, okay, you can tell that the writers don't know what to to write or the writers just wanted to fill some scenes in for uh, more time but with Shit's Creek you kind of don't see that at all no you kind of you literally don't see that at all every scene is just it just connects to the other scene in a way and every character like you kind of root for the characters you kind of want to see what's going to happen next to them and and the fact that they target a lot of like a lot of conflicts or problems that we go through on a daily base or they cover a lot of relationships it's special and it's i feel like it should go as one of the best shows in tv show history honestly and i and i love the fact that they show everyone that they have their own faults and you know everyone has their own baggage because who doesn't right um but also the best thing is that these people mature and they grow and they become better versions of themselves on their own way and that makes it very relatable to viewers and anyone watching the show. Um, I just think it's simple and at the same time there's a lot to it and it's like a sprinkle of some comedic comedic plot lines and that's that's what makes me love it. It's like a mix of different genres, comedy, romance, drama, And they also talk about the LGBTQ community. So, I mean, why not? I would recommend this show to anyone who is literally like 14 and up. Maybe maybe like 12. There are some inappropriate conversations. So maybe that's why it's not for everyone. But I do recommend it for everyone. I mean, that's appropriate to watch. And why did we talk about Schitt's Creek? It's because... Their motel, so where the actors filmed the show, it was uh, it's like in a town in a town called Schitt's Creek, and they stayed at a motel. And right now, the motel is can it can be yours for under one point six millions. So they're now selling the sh- the motel, and people can go, you know, and bid on it, or, or just go take pictures there as well. That's also an opportunity, right? It's kind of cool. And that's all for today's episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening to the GSMC Entertainment Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to, I would like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review. That really helps us. Also, if you can please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much and see you next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.